Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Charu Agrawal. I'm the Leslie Heisler Associate Professor for Lung Cancer Excellence at the University of Pennsylvania's Abramson Cancer Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today, we will discuss management of patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer in the setting of pdl one negative and in the absence of driver mutations. Is there any benefit of using single-agent immunotherapy, chemoimmunotherapy, or how should we choose between different regimens that may be approved today? I'd like to start off with a case. Uh, I saw a patient, 65 years old, significant smoking history, actually underwent CT screening for lung cancer, revealed a large hyalur lung mass, multiple lung nodules in both lungs, and a PET CT scan confirmed presence of uptake in this mass, as well as adrenal uh, lim- uh, uh, uptake. MRI of the brain did not show any evidence of metastatic disease, and the biopsy actually revealed a squamous cell cancer with a PDL1 level of 0%. And really, that led me to think what should he receive? And, um, you know, I think if we explore the treatment options, if I open up the guidelines, either NCCN or ASCO, ISLAC guidelines, you can see that for patients, um, there, there are a variety of different options that can be either chemoimmunotherapy or quadruplet Im- chemoimmunotherapy utilizing both CTLA4 as well as uh, PD1 or PDL1 blockade. There may also be certain situations where we could use, uh, if you look at the guidelines, if immunotherapy is contraindicated to use uh, VEGF inhibitors or other drugs that may be indicated. Specifically, looking at squamous cell carcinoma, something that my patient had, we can see that, again, we have chemoimmunotherapy or we have quadruplet immunotherapy, and then useful in certain circumstances, depending on whether or not the patient is a candidate for immunotherapy. We have a lot of clinical trials leading to many approvals. In fact, this has defined the lung cancer space over the last five to 10 years. And you can see them summarized here on this slide, specifically for the population that was on these trials that was PDL1 negative. So starting on the far left, chemoimmunotherapy using a quadruplet or dual immunotherapy set setting in Checkmate 9LA using ipilimumab as well as nivolumab, median overall survival of 17.7 months. You can see Keynote 21, which was the precursor trial to Keynote 189. Both of them listed here, median overall survival of about 17.2 months in Keynote 189 for the PDL1 negative category. And then same for Keynote 407, which was the squamous cell counterpart, median overall survival of 15 months. And then if we look at Empower 150, that looked at atezolizumab, and Empower Lung 3, that looked at simiplimab, again, both in combination with chemotherapy, we are seeing uh, median overall survivals of about 18.6 to 12.8 months. Hazard ratios for all of these clinical trials, you can see vary between 0.5 to about 0.9, depending on which clinical trial we're looking at. I'd also like to highlight that the response rates here are in the range of 30 to 40 to 50%, depending on which chemotherapy partner we are using. So at first glance, when you look at these data, uh, two things um, jump out at you. Firstly, we have a lot of information on how these patients do with combination chemoimmunotherapy. And second, I think what jumps out at me is that there doesn't seem to be that much of a difference in terms of chemoimmunotherapy um, using a triplet approach on the right or a quadruplet approach as uh, demonstrated in the column with Checkmate 9LA. Giving you some real data here, Keynote 189 on the left and Empower 150 on the right, you can see that these curves look very good, starting to come together towards the end. Uh, But again, these are looking at PDL1 negative subsets, looking at Checkmate 9 LA. You can see uh, for PDL1 less than 1% on the far left, top here, median overall survival of about 17.7 months, uh, doing quite well if you compare it to PDL1 greater than 1%, where the uh, median overall survival was 15.8 months. Again, these are not meant to be compared to each other, but I think it's it's interesting, especially when we think about our PDL1 negative population. 
And then finally, Empower Lung O3, you can see they did include PDL1 less than 1%. Uh, you can see overall survival curves up on top, but you can also see overall response rate of about 33% uh, with the use of this combination, less than what we expect in the intermediate or the high PDL1 population, but still better than chemotherapy alone. And then five year update, uh, important for this case, squamous cell, PDL1 less than 1%. You can see five-year overall survival uh, displayed here. The curves are starting to come together, maybe slight advantage at five years, overall response rate about 67.4% with a median duration of response of six and a half or seven months. So in summary, uh, for patients with PDL1 negative um, non-small cell lung cancer who don't have a driver mutation form a very distinct subgroup. Uh, I think you can see that overall survival for this population, as well as response rates, are not the same as they are for PDL1 1 to 49% or greater than 50%. Dual immunotherapy alone without chemotherapy is actually not currently approved in this setting. We do have approvals for chemoimmunotherapy as well as quadruplet chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, the, that those may be considered in certain situations, but there is no role for single agent immunotherapy either. And to discuss these uh, in more detail, I'd like to invite my colleague, but before I do that, I wanna just give you a brief summary of our case again, so that it can set the stage for our discussion. 65 years old, significant smoking history, metastatic squamous cell carcinoma, no brain metastases, PDL one level of 0%, and how should we treat him? To transition to my peer discussion, I would like to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Joshua Royce, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. Happy to be here. My name is Joshua Royce. I'm a thoracic medical oncologist and assistant professor of medicine at the Georgetown University School of Medicine, and I'm happy to be here for this important discussion. Great. Welcome. Um, so I discussed with you my dilemma. You know, this is a patient who's not very symptomatic, uh, PDL1 negative squamous. Should I use uh, chemoimmunotherapy uh, as a triplet or a quadruplet? Uh, what help me out here? How do you think about these um, treatment decisions? Yeah, no, and I would say squamous disease is probably the one where, especially when you're getting into PDL1 low or negative status. Uh, where I think there is some debate about what might be the best regimen there. I think the Keynote 407 uh, approach of pembrolizumab with chemotherapy, when you look at that subgroup, may not be performing quite as well. So for a patient such as this, um, who is fit, who has minimal symptoms, I would probably grab for you know a Checkmate 9LA to, or, or 227 off-label approach. I, I do think that adding in uh, the CTLA-4 inhibitor, multiple studies suggest benefit there. And to give our patient the best chance of a durable response, uh, that's probably what I would go for. Yeah, although I will point out that we don't quite have the long follow-up that we do with triplet regimens for the quadruplet regimens right now. So even though the five-year overall survival curves for Keynote 407 are starting to come together, we just don't have that length of follow-up for the quadruplet regimens, uh, be it Checkmate 9LA or even Poseidon for that matter. We we definitely would be very interested in looking at long-term uh, outcomes for these patients. But I completely agree with you that I think we know that this subgroup, uh, about a third of these patients uh, who don't have a driver mutation will fall into this PDL1 low category or negative category. Of course, this patient has squamous histology. So, you know, two strikes. Squamous histology and PDL1 negative, I think is got, they're probably going to do worse overall. So offering them uh, something that may benefit them is completely, um, completely in uh, in line with how I think about these uh, decisions as well. I alluded to this a little bit, George, but I I'm curious how does histology play into this discussion? Let's keep everything similar and change this patient to have an adenocarcinoma histology. Does that change your decision at all? Yeah, I would say a little bit. Um, you know, I think you know it's obviously hard to make cross trial comparisons, but I think the data for chemo plus IO is is quite strong, even in adenocarcinoma. I would agree that probably when you look at the incremental magnitude of benefit, when you get into the PDL one negative population, it it might not be there to this uh, to quite as high an extent. Perhaps so. That's just more an indication of prognostic of how a patient's going to do. Kind of uh, alluding to what you said about the squamous population. 
Uh, but for a patient such as this, if they were adenocarcinoma, I would probably still gravitate toward a triplet regimen, especially when you weigh additional toxicity, um, when you add in another checkpoint blockade to the mix. So it's more the histology that's um, making your making you decide between a quadruplet versus a triplet, and that's based on your observation of the subset analyses of these trials. Of course, we didn't go into detail for this, uh, but there some seems to be relative advantage for squamous histology compared to adenocarcinoma. Yes, absolutely. And then obviously we didn't we didn't talk about this in as much detail, but then you can throw in additional commutations, uh, SDK11, KEEP1, uh, that may also impact that decision as well. Exactly. And are there situations where you use chemotherapy alone in today's day and age? Can you share a few examples? Few and far between. Uh, for me, I think it's more with patients who have very concerning autoimmune disease or significant interstitial lung disease or some primary lung disease where you worry that even a low-grade pneumonitis could be very high grade in its manifestation for a patient. I think those are the main scenarios where I really think twice uh, about adding in an immunotherapy, but it's a difficult decision, right? Because we really know that the, the the really the only chance for patients to have a, a really durable response uh, is with the addition of the immunotherapy. But there are patients who, unfortunately, we, we can't prescribe it to. Absolutely. So in summary, for patients with PDL one negative uh, non-small cell lung cancer, it's very important for us to evaluate driver mutations in the absence of those. I think we still need to look at histology uh, because there may be a preferential advantage to using a quadruplet regimen and those with a squamous cell histology. Chemoimmunotherapy regimens, uh, I think, should be the standard of care in the situation, either triplet or quadruplet. And then finally, I think in the future, we'll be looking at molecularly driven chemotherapy as well as immunotherapy approaches, um, depending on the presence or absence of immunotherapy resistance mutations. With that, we'd like to close this episode. And thank you so much, Josh, for joining in on this uh, excellent conversation. Thank you for your insight. Thank you.